Hey everybody, wanted to spend some time today taking another look at the problem that I looked at in our last video, which is comparing dynamically the first n business days of each month. And for those of you who haven't seen the first video yet, this was based on a query from an Enterprise DNA member on our forum, where he wanted to dynamically look at comparing the first 5, 10, 15, and 20 billable days, so non-weekends, non-holidays, um, for a given month against the previous month. And in the first video, I looked at a Power Query solution for how to do this. But then in discussion with the expert team, Antrik Sharma, our resident DAX expert, um, proposed a brilliantly efficient measure that I think is really worth taking a deeper dive into, um, both in terms of the specific results it produces here, and also some of the techniques he used in developing that measure that I think will provide you with some additional tools in your DAX toolbox. It certainly did for me and for some of the other experts who, who took a look at this. So I think it's a, it's a really valuable pattern in general, this like-for-like -like comparison of business days, comparable business days across months. But let's, let's dive into Power Query and take a look specifically at what Antrish did here. So what we've got is just month and year, total sales, and then total business days, um, total sales for N business days that we select using Power Query based on this, um, this what if parameter that we developed that works against the numbered index of business days that we developed using the, the multiple group by statements in Power Query. But Antrish took a, a very different approach here. And this is, this is the kind of shockingly short measure that he used to solve this entire problem. And the first thing I noticed about this was the use of the generate command. And it's, it's a function that I, I don't use myself very often um, and really had to kind of pull this apart as to what it was doing. But it's, it's a perfect fit for this type of problem. And I want to delve into it a bit more here. So if we take a look at the SQL BI DAX guide, for those of you not familiar with the generate function, what it is is it's a, it's a table function that uses as its input two different tables and then does a, um, an equivalent of the SQL command cross apply. So it takes this base table table one, iterates on that, and then takes a second table expression and evaluates that for each row in the first table, and then returns a table as the, as the output. And so we'll walk through exactly what this means, but the, the key here is both table function, two table inputs, iterator, and a table output. So if we, if we jump down here and let's, let's just take Antrish's measure and drop it in. And the first thing that we'll see is it produces the exact same results as the, the Power Query solution that we did in the last video. So that's, that's good, and that, that validates both measures quite well. And so um, what we want to do, I think, in taking this apart is first kind of work outside in like we do in DAX. And so the first filter that's applied here is the, the dates is business day equals true. And what that's doing is that's taking out all of the non-weekend, non-holiday dates based on the um, extended date table is business day field. And we talk about that a lot more in the, in the first video and I also go through how to tie that into your holiday table. So if, you, if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to the first video in the comment section. But then the interesting part of this really comes in the two table inputs. So the first table is just a one column table of the month and year field um, in, the, in the date table. And that's, that's this month and year field right here. But the second table input is really where, where the, the interesting stuff happens. And what he's done here is he's taken a top end function and then used that, that dynamic parameter as the, as the number of rows in the top end attached to that, the, the total sales measure, and then applied that to the, the first table. And I think one of the 
easiest ways to really figure out what a, a complex measure like this is doing is to jump into tabular editor. And so if we, if we do that now, we can take a look at this, at this expression. And the first thing I would do is let's figure out what this, this top end expression is doing first. So if we take this, this top end portion and we copy this and we create a new DAX query. And if you remember DAX queries start with evaluate and then we paste that in and hit F5. What we'll see is that, and we, if we sort this, what we'll see is this is pulling the, the first five dates from the, um, the sales order um, table. So there's a, there's a table in here in the top end that's just the values of all of the order dates within the sales table. And this top end function is taking the, the value of the what if parameter. So in this case, it's five. And then applying that to the sales order date field and then saying, okay, based on that field in ascending order, I want to pull the first five dates within the filter context. And so given that there's no additional filter context here, it's just pulling those first five dates from the entire, the entire table. And that's, that's what we see here. And so if we go back, so we, we see what this is doing. And now if we look at the, the at sales column that's developed, what this is doing is just adding to that top end table, the, the total sales within the proper filter context. And so now what we've got is we've got the, the first table, which is just the, the month and year. And then the second table, which is that top end of the first, the first end dates from the, um, the sales table, and then the total sales associated with that. So let's now take a look at what this, what this generate table is doing. So let's hop back into tabular editor and we'll, we'll create a new DAX query and we'll start that as we always do with evaluate. And then we'll paste in the generate code and let's hit F5 and take a look at what this is doing. Let's expand this out a bit. And what we can see, let's, let's sort this in proper order. And what we can see is this is now taking for each row of the, the first table, the values, dates, month, and year, it's iterating on that and it's joining that with the, the five rows from the top end table evaluated in context with the, the at sales function uh, joined to that. And so it's taking the first five business days in April, then the first five business days in May, first five business days in June, and, and so forth until it gets to the end of the to the end of the first table. And so that is exactly what we need. And now it becomes really a relatively simple matter to then just take and add those add those values up. And so what we've got here is the result, which is sum x of this this table variable, which is the generate uh, results, and then just summing up the, the at sales function. And so what we've got then is within context, we've got this now summing up the first five business days in April, this summing up the first five business days in May, and so forth until we get down to the total, in which case it's got no context of month and year to operate, so it sums the entire at sales column and gets us the exact same total that we had in the Power Query solution. So that is, that is how you use generate. As I say, it's a perfect application here. And you can see that if we change this to 10, we get dynamically the same, the same results as we did in Power Query again. And we've got the bar chart adjusting. And there's one, there's one other additional trick I wanted to show you in this when you've got this sort of dynamic adjustment based on a, um, a what if parameter that I think is pretty neat, which is you can tie that dynamically 
into a measure for the title. So that if we change, if you look here, this is for the first 10 business days of each month. And then if we change that to 15, the title dynamically changes. And there's a, there's a real easy way to do this in DAX using conditional formatting. So we basically just take three, three strings. So the first is total sales for first, and then a space concatenate that with the, the value that we pull from the, that we harvest from the what if parameter, and then just tie that to the, to the rest of the title. And then if we go here into the visual, what we can do is go to conditional formatting of the, of the title right here. And if we click on FX, it's just format by field value. And then we just choose that, that dynamic title measure. And so that then will change with the, the selection of the what if parameter. So that is, is now a complete DAX solution. I think a really creative and efficient way to do it using that generate function. So I first wanted to thank Antrish for sharing his brilliant DAX knowledge with us. Um, I learned a lot in going through this. I hope you did as well. Um, so as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video, hopefully, where what we'll do is we'll explore some interesting visualization, particularly uh, scrolling KPI visual to report these results out. So look forward to seeing you then. Thanks again. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.